Hey everyone, uh, yeah, Neo is down big time. You already know that, you see it. Basically, every Chinese stock is down and they just can't catch a break at all since last year. Really, if you think about it, uh, we had the crackdowns from regulators, we had the DD fiasco. Uh, what else happened during that time? We had the fears of delist of uh, Chinese stocks being delisted, we had that chart yesterday two days ago that i showed you in a video of those five chinese companies uh being warned and uh marked as companies potentially facing delisting neo was not on that list and neo has never run into any problems with the sec so far right at all and that's something that just you know it's it's hard to get a grip on it's you know it makes you stressed out because this is really one of the jams in China is one of the greatest stocks you can trade, Chinese stocks you can trade, in my opinion. It's really, really a solid company. BYD also, right? It's not just new. BYD, awesome. Stunning company. Warren Buffett's in it. There's no... Uh, and, and they trade at a discount. Such a big discount and such a shame. And they just can't catch a break. So we had that DDFS. We had the Chinese regulators. We, had the, we have the fears of the, um, uh, companies from China being delisted constantly since last year. Then you have the the COVID outbreak now at the city of Shenzhen, and it's been shut down basically uh, because of a huge COVID outbreak. You know, it just adds to the whole turmoil. And then you have the Russia-Ukraine war, with Russia now seeking help from China. The United States is telling China, if you help the Russians, you're going to face consequences. And all of this just doesn't give a break. I mean, you just can't catch a break with Chinese stocks. They're getting hammered, and Neo is getting hammered for no reason whatsoever, to be honest. For no reason. The company's awesome. Everything's awesome about Neo. Every quarter it does great. And and just gets hammered on stupidity. Like, if you think about it. Um, now, this can turn out in two things, right? We don't know where in the world these geopolitical things are going. Because in the end, the whole game is there. It's all about geopolitics. What's, going, what's happening with China? What's happening with the United States? Are they going to keep on fighting with each other? And all that stuff. Uh, but if... If I knew, let's say, if I knew, if I had a magic ball and I could see and I knew that Neo was never going to get delisted at all and in the end things will be fine and uh, we'll get over this whole Russia, Ukraine and all these world conflicts would just settle down. Then we're talking about a stock that we would wish to fall even lower and have the greatest, greatest investment opportunity of our lives because could you imagine Neo going under 10 bucks? And knowing that this company would never get delisted and everything would be fine in the end, and getting uh, it would be the, just the greatest opportunity ever to make a ton of money years down the road, right? Right now, today, we also had another thing Hong Kong, as you can see here, Hong Kong stocks suffer panic sell off. It's not just in the United States, even in Hong Kong, they were having panic sell off today, which is insane. And it says here, by the close of trading, Neo was down 14% in Hong Kong. Xpeng was down 22%. By the way, Xpeng is being accused by people, by customers of Xpeng. Customers are accusing Xpeng that it, it's doing things with the battery and uh, causing them to lose power in their battery or the battery doesn't last as long. That's interesting. Uh, and Liato was down 19.6%. Uh, the frustrating part is that Ray Dalio, Bridgewater Associates, one of the biggest investment firms in the entire planet, December 31st, 2021, uh, the most recent filing disclosed showed that they increased their um, shares in NEO, which is like frustrating. What is going on? I mean, if Bridgewater Associates, who is the, one of the greatest, greatest and most successful investment firms, actually increased their shares in NEO, I mean, that speaks volumes. It speaks that, you know, it's, it, it tells you that, you know what, in the end, things will go fine, I guess. I don't like, I, I just don't get it. I'm, I don't know. I mean, this is very stressful. Uh, by Monday's close, Hong Kong uh, Sang Index was down 4.9%. And really, where, where, where else can we, I don't even know where else to begin with because there's so much things I want to show you here. Uh, we can look at the geopolitical risks are bearing down on the markets as a new week of trading is about to kick off. Equity index futures were much higher overnight, but saw significantly true. Right now, as we speak, the U.S. stock market is uh, just going bad right now as we speak. I mean, it's going downwards. It started off good, but uh, during the today's trading session, when it's when it started, when the trading session opened, it, it was it was started out, it started out good. It was going upwards, S&P 500, Dow, Nasdaq, and then it just halfway through the day, just started going downwards. Investors had reasons for 
uh, positivity with news that virtual peace talk uh, that yeah peace talks between Russia and Ukraine have seen progress. Yeah, I mentioned that on my community section of Viper Market Watch earlier, about three hours ago, that we are seeing progress between the two countries. But I don't know so far. Nothing really other than just words. And then you have this. However, the news appears to be more directly related to the equity markets today is coming out of China. A surge in COVID-19 cases has caused China to uh, has caused China to institute more lockdowns in Shenzhen and other cities. So it's not just one city. China is experiencing its worst outbreak since the pandemic started. This is crazy. I mean, two years on, I, I think and I think most of you uh, started to think that we're finally getting over this and now China has the worst outbreak since the big pandemic started what the heck the news caused the Hang Seng index to fall 4.9 percent the Hong Kong sell-off today and yeah Chinese stocks can not catch a break it's always one thing after another hammering them um, let's go to another but here's the thing other fresh like when you see really negative stuff and you think that the end of the world as far as new is concerned in the stock then you see something else like this which happened 14 hours ago was yesterday uh, Norway central bank boost position in Neo and Liado cuts X Bank in Q4 fine X Bank I get it maybe they knew about that battery part which was reported today but Norway central bank to boost positions in Neo Norway central bank is one of the most conservative banks in the world is one of the most best let's say one of the best banks in the world one of the best very conservative very well managed everything's fine and then you have Norway I mean, you, they're boosting their position in NEO. Ray Dalio, Bridgewater Associates, boost their position in NEO as of December 31, 2021. What's going on? Why are they boosting? Yet the news seems like it's the end of the world for NEO. Like I said, personally speaking, NEO for me is one of the best Chinese stocks. That in BYD, one of the best Chinese companies you can invest in. They're very, very good. They're not. There's nothing fishy, in my opinion, about them. They're great. They're amazing. I mean, Warren Buffett wouldn't have gotten in BYD if he knew the slightest thing. The guy is the most successful trader there is out there. Um, and I highly respect Warren Buffett, and that's why I bought BYD when it was 24 bucks. But uh, yeah, so this is like okay, if, if if Norway Central Bank thinks so highly of Neo, why in the world am I so afraid of it? And I shouldn't be because this really is a great company, right? Neo was the only one of the U.S. listed Chinese electric vehicle uh, trio to fall in the fourth quarter last year. Norway Central Bank, meanwhile, bought more shares of the stock. So it says here. Uh, Norway Central Bank held 13,749,000 shares of NEO's U.S. traded American depository shares at the end of the fourth quarter. That's up 3.2 million. So they increased by 3.2 million. Like I said, it's worth noting that NEO was not among the stocks that came. There was a list, like I said, from the SEC that showed five Chinese stock companies that are being threatened with delisting. NEO was not in that list. There should not be fears about NEO being delisted. But uh, what is hammering, like I said, is the other part here with, and I don't know where that's going to lead to. Uh, we've got to consider the war between Russia and Ukraine. Russia's invasion of the country has been met with trade sanctions for several, uh, from several other countries. However, China isn't among them. Instead, recent reports claim that Russia is seeking aid from China and that the country could assist it in the war with Ukraine. Like, and even the, the U.S. White, the, uh, the White House. Uh, acknowledges that they uh, feel and believe that China is going to aid or is giving aid to Russia in the Ukraine war. Big red flag for the United States. I mean, if if things escalate, could the United States say, you know what, all your Chinese stocks get out of out of this out of this out of my stock market? I don't know. Um, it just it seems highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. I mean. I don't know. Uh, why would Norway? Because Norway's central bank bought the American depository shares of the American trading depository shares of Neo. Uh, Ray Dalio, I mean, I don't know. Do they, are they that? I mean, they can't be that successful and that blind at the same time. So, with that being said, uh, they can't catch a break. Uh, Neo can't catch a break because of one thing after the other. And what about Tencent today? Tencent, uh, Chinese regulators hammering the Tencent uh, because of cues of money laundering, right? I mean, it's like everything is going in the direction of scaring investors away. And I understand that investors need to be careful. I need to be careful. Everyone needs to be careful. But it's just, it's frustrating really bad when you know that NEO is really a good company and hasn't done anything to be, um, be where it's at right now as a stock, really. It hasn't done anything to be where it is right now. At the same time, though, it is comforting because if it falls even more, you 
you know, if it goes under 10 bucks, right now at 15, I'm not buying because most likely it's going to keep on going down. But at, at, at let's say it hits nine dollars, eight dollars, I'm going to be really tempted to load a lot of Neo shares because uh, that could actually turn out to be one of the greatest investment moves I ever make down the road, years down the road. Uh, that's just the way I see it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. I wish you all the best. Take care.